lot to learn from maybe tech companies from that. But that's another topic for another day. Um, Jessica, a lot of ladies are struggling with engineering and especially um, software-related uh, roles. Mm-hmm. It's still considered as a, you know, a man's space, which I, I, I totally disagree. But there's a couple of things that I've observed in the ecosystem. Uh, one, of the, one of the ladies or many of the ladies that I've seen them make it big globally, I've observed a few things with them. And, and I'd like maybe to hear from you. One of them, they're really consistent. They don't mind if they are the only ladies in the, in the house. And I think you mentioned that in the class of maybe 40 people, you are just five ladies. And they go an extra mile of putting themselves there and accessing all the resources equally and asking the right questions. And over time, they learn. What, what do you think we can do uh, to ensure that we, 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 we take as many ladies? Because I know if ladies become software engineers or engineers, they are really good, more than even a male counterpart, right? Mm-hmm. So what do you think that journey would look like if today we said we're embarking on ensuring that ladies feel as comfortable to pursue engineering? Um, engineering generally or software engineering? Uh, let's, let's just talk generally because engineering is engineering. The concept is the same. It's only that you take one path to like do the hardware, software, or just middleware. Correct. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this stems from the iHerb days. Yeah. When we had the launch at the iHerb. Yeah. And um, my uh, my colleagues like Judith Oweger mm. and Linda Kamau were all in that space. And, you know, we actually counted the number of ladies in that room. And there were like 300 people. Mm. Michael, it was perturbing. <laughs> we were just like... Are we like only less than 10 or 50 people in this room for women in tech? Mm. Like we were just trying to understand like who's graduated from computer science Mm. or... um, Back back then. Yeah, Yeah. or uh, IT, Mm. like a BIT. Anything, yeah, yeah. Um, Anything computer uh, related. Yeah. So uh, we actually said... Uh, that we were having a conversation. We said there's a problem yeah. right here, right? Because yeah. yeah. um, if you have a conversation with somebody who's just graduated from an engineering degree, yes. it's computer, yeah. hardware, software, mm-hmm. they end up in like management consultancy roles and you're like, okay, mm. but you started computer science. Yeah. I ended up in management consultancy, but I got rotated to research and then eventually helping the faculty of information technology mentor mm. BIT students mm-hmm. on their projects and then running mobile boot camps. Mm. So to some extent, like using the computer science uh, knowledge and then very useful, the management consultancy that I did was very useful during the iHub days, but yeah. then the computer science kicked in when I was back at the startup brave yeah, yeah and again it's kicking in now right just yeah. to understand the world of web 3 yeah uh so the women that have made it out there uh they are very few yes when you say women in tech yeah and i think uh let's mention them mm. yeah the people are like Shiro, Shiro Theruri, mm. who's moved from like Sandy VP of Engineering now to Glovo, mm. which is in Spain. Mm. Um, this Rohinya Ocheng, mm. uh, who was ex Microsoft program manager, very good uh, on product and getting the developer community going, mm. who's now at a growing startup. Yeah. Um, there are other people like Judith Oiga, who is in my class. Mm. Uh, she's a consultant in mobility. She was the founder of Akira Chicks together with me and other ladies. And now she's actually at the UN doing mobility mm. uh, research. Yeah. Uh, there's Linda Kamau and Marie Gedinji, like who are actually the mo- the active co-founders right now mm. at Akira Chicks, mm. encouraging women to actually study uh, software development and entrepreneurship 
and design. Yeah. So they have been running Akira Cheeks for the last like 12 years yeah. since we started it. Yeah. And we need more uh, women like them taking it to the next level. Yeah. They had full-time jobs when they were doing it and then eventually in the last couple of years decided to fully, fully focus on this and they have a full campus mm. uh, in Nairobi. Yeah. And they graduate about like 20 solid uh, women who come from marginalized backgrounds. Yes. Uh, you know, around Kenya, like these are women who come from Samburu, women who come from like really, really sometimes traumatizing backgrounds. Yeah. Uh, to actually have uh, hope mm. that they can actually get a career in tech. Yes. So, what I can say is the women who are in this space need to be woke. Mm. Uh, we need to be there for each other. We yes, need yes. To collaborate with each other and yes. say like, hey, uh, the field of engineering is not only for men. Mm-hmm. It is for women. Yeah. It is for everybody. Yes. And I like to do, I like to say this, like Michael, like whether you're a man or whether you're a lady mm. or how or whoever you conform to, yeah. because I want to be neutral to everyone, <laughs> right? Whoever yes. you conform yes. to. Yes. Um, you're at the end of the day, you're a human being, mm. a human being with a lot of potential. Yeah, and it is right. We have different biological capabilities, physically and intellectually. Yeah, but the mind is the mind. Yeah, Michael. Yeah, at the end of the day, mm. when you harness the full power of your mind, yeah, you're able to actually achieve, and this is what we don't realize. Yes you're actually able to even achieve that dream of going to NASA. Mm. You can achieve it. Mm. And I think there's one person I really want to mention. Like She's called Kathleen Simiu. Mm. And I met Kathleen when we were running the Brave uh, uh, Data Workshops. Yes. And she was doing her undergraduate at JQuet, mm. Computer Science mm-hmm. and Math. Yes. And you can just see she was just really outspoken and I was just like, that's really, and then yeah. I just like, that is talent right there. Mm. I think I remember giving Kathleen an opportunity to internet Brave and yeah. then I think she also had an opportunity to internet Africa's Talking. Yeah. And she, she took Africa's Talking and I was like, go for it. Yes, yes. If that's going to be your path and you feel like you're going to learn more, go yeah, for it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. You need to hold on to talent. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. They feel you encourage them. Yeah. And Kathleen has made immense, immense progress. Yes. On her data science uh, path, career. Yeah, yeah. Her path, like mm. five years to six years down the line, mm. she was doing DevRels, uh, developer relations and yeah. Africa's talking. She yeah. was like the head of data. Mm. And I remember some of the interns that came in at iHerb were hired by her, mm. a lady called Catherine. Mm. And um, eventually, I think Google was after her. Mm. She turned it down. She still uh, continued working for Africa's talking. Yes. Which the resilience is amazing because mm. she knew she had, she was still learning and. Africa's Talking provided an opportunity for her to continue harnessing yes. her full potential. Yes. So that was amazing. Yeah. And uh, I think Kathleen to date knows more in data science than I do. Wow. Right? Yeah. Because she embarked on like a, a natural language processing for Kiswahili and now she's a Mozilla Fellow. Mm. Now to become a Mozilla Fellow... I did see the requirements. Mm. Uh, I think she's doing a master's in Georgia Tech. Mm. Uh, and that's a really hard ma- master's to to actually complete. Yeah. It's yeah. very demanding, very, very demanding, yes, yes. especially when you have a full-time yeah. job. Yeah. You have to be spot on on the assignments and the yeah. coursework is really rigorous. Mm. And But Georgia Tech is one of the best in the U.S. Mm. Um yeah, so to be a Mozilla fellow, it's, 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 it's not a small feat. It's not a small feat. It's, yeah. it's like becoming a TED fellow, but like mm. in a different world. Yes. So I think, you see, just using Kathleen's example, yeah. and I have other examples which I'll mention. Yes. Um, Kathleen, like, you, uh, she, asked for, she asked for advice where needed. Mm. She had a mm. uh, network around her. She would ask me for advice. She would ask peop- other people for advice. By the end of the day, she was woke. Yes. She knew what she wanted. Yes. So we as women, and even as men, we need to be clear what is our purpose. Yes. 
when you want that yeah. for me it's unleashing the best in people and having authentic leadership yes go for it there's nothing going to stop you yes right yes um there's also Liz Ondula right mm. Liz Ondula also interned with me at the I have been 2013 mm-hmm. she and uh, a gentleman called Washira uh, actually ran the first kids hackers camp mm. in the whole of Nairobi and yes. then everyone copied that whole model I see, I see what you say there <laughs> because yes. I see a lot of that nowadays yes yeah. yes so um Liz uh was studying at technical university and really interested in mechatronics yeah. so she formed like uh her final year project was a quadcopter mm-hmm. that she actually made from wood uh she's very artistic as well yeah. like she can actually draw art but she mm. she also like would code and do hardware stuff so we'd have like uh hardware hackathons with her at iherb and uh and Liz uh ended up been hired by IBM research and worked mm. there for like 3 to 4 years and mm. then she came to brave and <laughs> I, the story i can tell you about liz was like some some of her uh the people around her didn't believe that she could actually make a career in uh engineering mm-hmm. Why? hardware engineering software engineering because she was a woman just just because she's a female no one believes she can do it yes now you know where liz is uh-huh. liz is a phd student okay. in the us okay yeah pursuing liz, things in science no, pursuing things in artificial intelligence ah, nice. as we speak nice. she's doing her research yeah it's amazing what she's been there for the last four years and yes. liz is somebody who who supported me like last year when my mom passed she came and she was like yeah. i'll be there for you but yeah. She believed in herself and mm. she has that focus and she knows where she wants to be. Mm. I can mention another lady, Strathmore. Yes. yes. I think like this might be a bit sensitive to mention on this yeah. uh forum but I'll mention like some of her professors mm. said like uh she wouldn't make it. Mm. Was she a student or co- colleague? She was she was a student, finally a student okay. and she came to me and she was almost in tears okay. i was like which prof, which which lecturer is this telling you that yeah. i was mad i was going yeah. to go after the lecture and <laughs> like tell him off yeah. i'll not mention any names here but <laughs> as like yeah you 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 don't worry you mm. believe in yourself you mm. be, you built this software uh mobile software till now mm. and you're still doing it yes. so continue doing it yes do you know where she works now <laughs> she works for amazon in the wow. us she's in Amazing. seattle Amazing stuff. So are you Jessica are you saying also we stigmatize or stereotype most ladies because yes. they yes. know what they want? No, you see what the society does mm. is uh we have a way that we view women. Mm. And we we view women in a very traditional way that we're not able to actually cover the sciences and the math side of things, right? Mm. Mm. But actually women are more uh inquisitive about not just doing the 1 plus 1 equals 2 we want yeah. to know how does that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 we mm. go deeper on that side mm. so i think uh that's an important thing to note yes. and i'm not saying men and others as well yeah, yeah. don't do that yeah. i'm just saying that we've built a stigmatized community in tech yes where we need to stop that yes we need to encourage everyone as human beings that we have potential mm. and you empower people once yes. you empower people and they get out of the box mm. the person is able to achieve so much and you will you will be bewildered yes so how can we do this how can we the de- stereotype or the de- de- stigmatize people uh, you ladies who are in tech and also how should we ensure that that process and, and this actually takes me back of you and other ladies starting akira chicks which is still i don't know how successful it is until today but i hear that it's one of the biggest platform that is focusing on less privileged ladies to support them in their tech journey so we among us maybe akira chicks and you can speak about it and how it, it was conceptualized and the success and everything but what more can we do on those lines right 
I can only speak about the early days of Akira Cheeks because I actually like stepped down as a co-founder many years ago. Mm. I think the best people to speak about it are Linda Kamau and Marie Gidinji. They've been running it uh, actively for the last couple of years and have kept it. Mm. But I'll just tell you, um, the genesis of it was like, I was like, ladies, we need to do something. Yeah. So uh, when the IHA was launched in March uh, 2010, yeah. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I was like, hey, ladies, we need to actually meet. Uh, we need to have a forum whereby we can, uh, we need to encourage more women like ourselves to have these conversations yes. uh, of why we should actually stick in tech yeah. and why we need more ladies in tech yeah. and engineering. Yes. Uh, there, are, there are pictures of it, meeting, there's videos of it. Yeah. And uh, about like 10 women showed up, some fell off, off of the bandwagon, yeah. but uh, the initial group formed Akira Chicks. I remember securing the domain Akira Chicks yeah. uh, dot org dot com at that point in time. Yeah, uh, and then Linda put together a training program. Marie was like, "Let's get women." And uh, I remember I remember Angela Angela Lungati, who's the CEO of uh, Ushaidi, um, also. Uh, trying to get people to um, subscribe to teaching. Yeah. Yeah, like people in the Volunteers. Ecosystem. Yeah, yeah to mm. teach. And mm. there are a lot of people who are willing to give back and yeah. teach these young ladies. Yeah. And to that, they, to date, they actually commercialize that business. It's a not-for-profit, not mm. but it's like one of the best coding accelerators for women who are mm. underprivileged and re relentlessly... Uh, uh, the women you should see, like they reach out. They're not. They're not only from Nairobi. You know, mm. they're from different parts of yeah, Kenya yeah. and East Africa, I believe. Yeah. And uh, they reach out and they ask for internships after their program, mm -hmm. after the program. And I know a lot of startups like Twiga and Utu uh, and Africa Stocking, I believe yes, as well, yes. have supported um, the. The, the interns and yeah. some of those interns uh, have actually gone off to rise in the career ladder. Mm. There's one lady I think who I used to mentor. She's called Sharon mm. Cheryl Wangari. Mm. Uh, she she was doing a bit of design with me while I started a platform for women who mentor and innovate in Africa. I'll talk a little bit about why I started that. Yes, and uh, you could see how raw she was like in 2015. And I asked her, Sharon, what do you want to do? Mm. And she's like, I want to I want to own a a Touareg. I'm like, yeah, you'll get mm, that. You know, nice, she had yeah. she had she was only like 21 or 22. Mm. Like Sharon, right now, uh, she was a senior U, UI designer at Sandy, mm. and then she went off to actually become a senior UI designer at Space Tech. Mm. So you can see how they are rising. Yes, yes. Because they, they actually, she, she was like blunt. I need, I want this. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with saying like you want money to, to actually For be sure, financially yeah. stable, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, um, there are stories out there, and I think there are a lot of undocumented stories of um, the successes of, of some of these initiatives that have been started by women for women in mm. uh, in in Kenya or, and across the continent, yes, right? Yes. We need some of these success stories coming out. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I think in the previous podcast I did mention that we have all this funding, but we need again mm. success stories mm. of where what this does funding, happen after the what funding. has ha yeah. happened. There's this business model that has been developed. Yes, there's this amazing tech uh, talent that uh, team that has been developed. Yes, and things like that. Yeah, you know, uh, something has just hit my mind right now. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. Yeah, learning from global entrepreneurs. Yes. So I, I I happened to see an entrepreneur based in East Africa learning from entrepreneurs in the UK mm -hmm. because they've started similar businesses. Mm -hmm. I, I have no issues with that. <laughs> but I do have Reserv some issues with it. Reservations. I said, yes, because I'm like, okay, we go all the way mm. to the UK mm. for a dinner yeah. to learn from... Oh, people do that? Yeah. Come and I'm like... Now. Uh, aren't there entrepreneurs here locally who have yeah, done it yeah. that we can actually 
knock on the door of Africa's talking, knock on the door of other startups and say, can we just host a dinner or go to a dinner locally? Yeah. A trip around Nairobi to Tanzania or Nairobi to Kampala. Yeah. Or Nairobi to Ta, sorry. Yeah. Is a couple of hours. Yeah. Why can't we have that kind of collaboration locally? Mm. Or Zanzibar if you want a fancy yes. place. Yeah. Yes, you've built the best billion dollar companies. Mm. But if we do not learn from ourselves, mm. Michael yeah. and Teddy Warrior mentions this. Yes. We will not get to that level where we will get out of our insecurities. Yes. We will still be looking towards the West mm. for guidance. And even the markets are not the same. The to markets be honest. are very different. Um and also truth be told If you're in UK, if you're in San Francisco, if you're in Israel, wherever you're, even in Nairobi, a lot of entrepreneurs have made mistakes severally. But the mistake you'll make in UK is not the same mistake you'll make in Nairobi. Correct. And, and understanding that at least in Africa, you can at least compare um, some of the experiences, maybe Lagos and Nairobi, and try to, to learn something tangible out of that. And it's also to say people should not go out there and know what is working, what is not working. But when it comes to learning, and, and that's why actually I started these uh, conversations because I realized not so much of this is out there. And, you know, Correct. I don't like pointing p- my fingers a lot. No, we're not pointing for me, fingers. We're just making but a But I like putting, yeah, for sure. I like putting um, work into what I think I can fix at my level and then working on that towards the greater good Correct. that I want to see. And it's good, by the way, you brought this up. Uh, you said you started uh, women uh, WMI WMI Africa. What what advice is that? And how, where are we right now? So um, uh, WMI Africa is called Women Who Mentor and Innovate in Africa. Mm-hmm. It was supposed to be more of like a uh, uh, a platform mm-hmm. similar to uh, let me the closest that would be was like the ADP list. Mm. Yeah. So it was uh, to actually bring all, oh my God, I started this with Hilda Mora and Liz Ondula in 2013. Hilda, Hilda. We need to bring Hilda here. Yes, you Hilda have to. done amazing stuff. Yeah, so I started, actually mm. it, was, it, was, it was like Hilda's idea and then she came to me and I was like, yeah, let's do this. And then mm. I brought Liz into the picture because of her uh, hardware engineering background. Yeah. Uh, 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 Hilda had the BBIT and then I had the computer science so that was an amazing mix yeah. and um, uh, the idea for WMI Africa was really to um, have a mentorship platform yeah. whereby you could reach out to uh, like women who have made it in uh, in tech in general yeah. so like you remember in my previous podcast I mentioned like the Kate Gitaos mm. um, the the um, the Oreo Colors, the Juliana Rotich, mm-hmm. and and all those other women in tech, myself included, Hilda included, like mm-hmm. if you wanted to reach out to any of those ladies, you could actually have a one-on-one with them. And mm-hmm. now I'm not saying like you can't do that via Twitter, mm-hmm. but this is more of a commercial uh, streamlined platform where you yeah. could do this. Yeah. So somebody like uh, any, any of the ladies that are like looking to grow a career in tech or design or uh, become an entrepreneur could actually just get advice from them, mm. right? Mm. So uh, we built that platform, but uh, the uptake, the user research was... Um, the people were like, why don't you just create a Facebook platf- a Facebook group yeah, and, okay, and yeah, people yeah. would have the uptake? So I, th- I don't think so that platform was the right platform for that point in time mm. because it wasn't sticky. Mm. per se because we launched it we launched it prematurely and really what we did in uh, from 2013 um i stepped down fully from wmi and wmi doesn't run anymore um but we got a, a grant from isoc to actually train uh women on uh, how to use the internet mm-hmm. to empower themselves to actually learn more about people in tech yes. and um mm. I, to some extent, also funded uh, WMI quite a bit mm. to actually bring cohorts of women. Mm. So what Liz did, uh, Hilda, has, Hilda was an advisor and then yeah. Liz and I were more active. Yeah. Between 2013, 14 and 15, yes. we brought uh, about three cohorts mm-hmm. of like 
twenty women mm-hmm. in uh, from different universities. Mm-hmm. We call them WMI ambassadors. They were from TUK, Technical University of Kenya, MMUK, Multimedia University, mm-hmm. uh, JQAT, like all the universities you can imagine. Yes, we brought them in. We we actually had a curriculum. We taught them soft skills, uh, and then uh, we actually put them into a a position whereby we wanted them to come up with projects and and start pitching. Yeah. And we brought like speakers like uh Dr. Carla Flamin mm-hmm. from Dr. Carla Flamin was our advisor. Mm-hmm. She was a research scientist at IBM Research. Yeah. Uh and now she's an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. But um like you could talk to people like Dr. Carla Flamin, we wow. brought, brought in people like Sarah Kabira. Mm-hmm. We brought in amazing speakers. Yeah. 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 So the idea was um some of these ladies they should just have that courage to actually talk mm. to not just sit in the audience yes. keep quiet yes have the courage to even go and say hi to that uh, speaker yes but what we will notice is that some of them don't have that courage to talk to the speaker and they miss the opportunity yes and then you later send an email mm. and the speaker might not even have a recognition oh uh, i see i see but WMI was all about like connecting um potential mm-hmm. talent to up uh up, I mean upcoming talent and potential talent to 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 women in the industry. Yes. Whether it was all spectrums. Yeah. So we we tried so many different approaches. Mm. It was like ha- getting the cohort mm-hmm. and that cohort to date is what forms a WhatsApp group called Women in Tech and Business. Mm, okay. Uh Lisa and I are not on that platform anymore. Why? <laughs> uh we we needed a break. <laughs> <laughs> so other people run it. So I think we are more of the we are more of the people that start things mm. and then believe in that community to take it forward. Mm. Uh, I've started many WhatsApp groups, the KE WhatsApp group, the CTO WhatsApp group, many groups. Mm. But the thing is, I don't believe in holding on. Mm. You need to start things and let them go and let the people in that community take in initiative. Yeah. But in the, at the end of the day, Does uh, that Michael, happen? it does happen to some extent, mm. yes. Uh, but not as much. They still wait for the veterans to get in and and do stuff mm. but but honestly my advice like to the women out there it's about you you need to be woke you need to really see mm. what's going on be self driven in the community mm. yes and if you're you feel not sure where to start mm. there's so many platforms that you can actually like access yes women who can give you advice mm. on how to start yes not me yeah. alone yes. there are many out there yes reach out to them Yes. Yeah. Now, speaking of that, Jessica, because you mentioned a couple of very fascinating experiences and platforms that you build, but at some point you you just step down or you leave it. And and one of the things that I've 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 really realized for a long time now, I don't know if it's the market or the cultural thing, not only even for women in tech, but community approach of anything. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you need to go I'll, I'll, you know, you need to go the whole way or even stay there for a couple of years to have that sustainability to have um people who actually can really take over and do stuff and sometimes you will find there is no one who actually can really do exactly what you intended with that community people take over take advantage start uh, you know um personal personal gains from from the community how do you think we can address that especially because i feel like even with the ladies or with the women in tech there is a lot of community approach that is required and it should be very consistent and intentional for us to really get where we want to go but even then how can we address some of these issues whereby people don't understand that someone volunteers you said you spent your money to fund some of these projects yeah. before even you got maybe one grant that you got over the years And no, I only got like it was yeah. a 10k grant and I didn't even One use the f- full thing. I think I, 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 they kept half of the money. Yeah. So people don't realize that especially people who come for that community. They think you are there maybe if you run it really well they think you have all this capacity or you have the resources but sometimes you just chip in to make sure the experience is the right one. Um so how how can we unnest that to ensure that 
we have something that is really sustainable and mm. as well impactful because mm. without that impact then at the end of the day is just wasted time yeah uh so someone again I, <laughs> i'm actually surprised i didn't mention her. yeah dr shiko gitao mm. uh man dr shiko gitao is an amazing human being i can't even express okay uh, how much respect i have for her mm-hmm. uh She's not doing a women uh, led approach company yeah. but yeah. her company is called Kala. Mm. And it's a venture builder. Yeah. Now she's she is encouraging women entrepreneurs and women in tech to to join her company whether it's at an associate level mm-hmm. uh or an intern level yeah. to just learn about like how to build a product yeah. how to work with product teams and 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 level up. Yeah. And then eventually you work on different projects with multiple stakeholders yeah. and you can go and then you can leave Carla at a point in time and go and work for the big bigger companies yes. depends on what you want yes. but i think like she's actually put in um a business model behind what she's doing yes you know yes. instead of just building the communities like that mm. you know just getting like cohorts and getting them out getting cohorts and getting them out yeah. uh she's building a venture builder mm-hmm. so this is a company that actually uh helps put teams together mm-hmm. and you have an asset of different teams with different skill sets that yeah. can help you build a mvp minimal viable project mm-hmm. a product and, and this is lady Dr. Only? Shiko Gita. No, it's actually a okay. mix. Okay. It's actually a mix. Yeah. But you did ask mm. how uh can we sustain such sustain yeah. this? Yeah. Now yeah. the likes of Akira Chicks are sustained it through grants. Mm. Um the likes of the Moringas which are not lady only but are also sustaining it through grants again mm. to a certain extent. No investment and commercialization. They did yeah. receive yeah. some level of investment, but I just think coding accelerators are really hard mm. to fully commercialize yeah. you do, do need some level of grant funding yes uh, ad tech as a whole For is sure. also yeah. hard yeah. need a level or of company supported of of oh yeah of mm. grant funding yeah. uh, unless you have like a corporate investing in you fully yeah. uh, and then you find a viable business model to scale either it's um the business model could be like charge mm. per student and mm. then the volumes of that. Yeah. But what I'm saying is um when you put communities together, yeah. uh I'm just trying to think of a women led only community that's really sustainable. There's there's uh there's a group for women who are like in their professional stage of their lives who mm. are looking like for different advice. This women work mm. started by Isis and uh Asha mm. uh Meru. Mm. Uh they also have like grant funding to some extent and it's not like fully like has a, a has a viable business model mm-hmm. but uh i think if these communities that are women led can actually have some kind of uh model that they, they can actually like find some stickiness to actually have the community run itself yeah, yeah. then um that will be successful. Yeah. And I think the the person who has come closest to this is Patricia. Mm-hmm. Uh from Kayana. Kayana mm-hmm. is a co-working space for women. Mm-hmm. Where is it located? Okay. Uh it's located in Kilimani. Mm. So Patricia P- Patricia Okello um it uh, has that space and has set it up for a couple of years and she has a lot of women she had Bill, Melinda Gates mm. uh come I think about 3 years ago and as part of that round table with Melinda Gates so you know just having a place like that and having events and having kind of like different corporate events that's that's a viable business model to engage the 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 community to come together because you build a community you build that mailing list and then yeah. you engage them through different, uh yeah. different platforms yeah. uh whether it's events related whether it's um trainings workshops trainings workshops um uh, partnerships that you get with mm. different organizations mm. and things like that yeah. so i think yeah. uh that's something close that mm. the closest i've seen yes that has a business model that's sustainable and probably even chicogi towers company kala yeah. it's not women focused only but it 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 is something that yes can be used as a benchmark yes and and, and jessica from your experience do you think um maybe separating or isolating women and saying this is for women or uh, and this is for women only does that really work uh to some extent uh, michael i would 
<laughs> I, 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 I'm kind of not agreeing, but I, I, I would agree uh, because sometimes women have issues that they feel they need to discuss in a safe space. Mm. So I would agree that uh, like women in tech, women in HR, women in business, like they have their own conversations which they actually need to have spaces that they can openly converse about. Mm. But... The same thing needs to happen on the on this side. Mm. Men need to have their own events mm. where they, they say this is women, a uh, man in business <laughs> and man in tech. I am so serious <laughs> because men, honestly, yeah. they don't talk about the issues. Yes. They probably talk about it over a drink or something of the sort, yes, or yes. golfing or doing mm. any other activity like mm. camping and things mm. like that. Mm. But I'm just like, if we are doing it. Even man can do it. There's nothing keeping mm. them from not doing it. And we not feel offended. Well, mm. I'll not feel offended. Mm. But mm. coming back to the, the, the man only, mm. we need to stop manals. Mm. Was man, that? man only on panels. Mm. We need to have women on <laughs> those panels. <laughs> but you can't force these things. Jessica. You can't, but you need uh, uh, inclusivity. <laughs> I truly totally agree, and 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 the the interesting aspect that I've seen with the engineering side of things or the science side of things, is not something that you can force issues, right? Now you say that, yeah. And this is getting heated right now. Yes, because you go. asked that conversation. You said <laughs> yeah, yeah. we have the women only events, and that's mm. fine. And mm. we're okay with the men mm. having their men only events. We're not going to come in and say, "Hey, can we be part of this?" Mm. But we're asking for <sighs> cut the the pie halfway. Mm. If you're going to have a panel mm. don't have a hundred percent man only panel mm. and you mean to tell me there's no man in technology that could not discuss this yeah. or no VC yeah uh, I mean there's no sorry no, no not no man no women in mm. tech mm. or VC who could not mm. contribute to this conversation mm. I think these organizers event organizers and the panel should be aware they should raise it out and be like mm. hey we're actually missing a perspective here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that I have no dispute. But I think this is a, um, a problem that we need to address from where it starts, right? So say I do an event, right, that culminates the bigger conference where I need a panel or panelists to discuss certain, uh, certain topics, right? And the way people who do events actually approach it, and I'm sure you've done events, is that you reach out to people you already have interacted with or you know their knowledge, capacity, and all that. You don't just say, oh, yo, guys, uh, we are doing, maybe we are discussing uh, quantum physics, right? And we need three men and three, three women. It doesn't work like that. It's <laughs> like you know the field, maybe someone is researching on this, they are doing PhD, or they are working on this project, and then you reach out to them as a courtesy call, right? Mm -hmm. But the other way around, uh, just to, to like try to address why that happens and also try to come up with, or maybe reason out which ways can we, actually start working towards this is that I reach out to guys I know and if most of the ladies have not been coming to the event or if they have been coming to the event that culminates to this big event they have not been actively participating participating and therefore I don't know their capability or their capacity correct and then I go ahead maybe I have a group or maybe I have a mailing list or I have a you know a network contact list and I reach out to them I say I'm looking for panelists again they don't say, <laughs> I want to be part of that panelist. So it feels like either they, they, they are not in a safe space to say, you know, I'm, I'm okay, I want to do this. And that's one thing that I want us to, you can help me maybe address this. How do you think we can create those safe, safe space, not from the panelist part of it, but from the what happens before the panelist? So that by the time we're having that panelist, the, the ground is right. equal. So I think it's very straightforward. Like uh, a couple of people in the ecosystem have created forms and said like, hey, say no, uh, no to manuals. And uh, they, I, I think there's, there's a Rolodex of uh, amazing women speakers that has been going through the ecosystem. Mm. It's been put out on a lot of groups on Twitter and things like that. I'm not sure if people have access to this, but you actually find hundreds of people, women mm. around the continent that are actually speakers on that form mm. that you can actually reach out to. Mm. So a couple of uh, people have taken initiative to provide this mm. information. Mm. Like somebody 
uh, who's really a really good speaker, not speak up. Obviously, you've seen me active in the CTO group. Yes, yeah, I'll be yes, like, yes. yeah, I can mm. moderate this and things like that. Mm. I don't think so. Everyone is like that. Yes, you're outgoing, Jessica. No? So many ladies yes, are outgoing yes, as yes. you are. Yeah, yeah so uh, for those who are silent and things like that, I think I can recommend, people like me can recommend. There are roller decks of uh, names that have been provided by the community that people, if they have access to these forms, they can be reached out to. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, fair enough. And uh, do we need maybe forums where we like even, because people might be really smart, but they're not confident enough to like share that knowledge. I know so many people who are like that. I've ever approached so many ladies, uh, giving them a speaker slot, but they are ish- and I know their capability already. But that confidence of standing there and sharing, and also feeling that this is good enough to be shared, so there is that I think disconnection. Maybe it's something that maybe we can address over time to like try and have forums where we talk about how to do this. Um, yeah, I think I think that's a valid point. Um, I think just going back from my university days, I was a very shy speaker. I wouldn't yeah, even yeah. want to do a class presentation. Mm. But uh, I think during my days at Strathmore, interacting with the different students and Dr. Sevilla pushing me and Edwin pushing me in front of C-level execs to actually have a conversation with them, yeah. doing due diligence on their company, this gives you... Uh, the con, it, you know, it, and, and and a man is doing that gives mm. you the confidence, yeah. shows you that they have like confidence and respect for what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and then also, I think becoming a TED fellow changes everything. They mm. put you on a on 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 stage and they make you practice and practice. Mm. It's insane. How many days do you practice before the main event? Uh, it's about two days, but mm. it's intense practice. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm there not are people. Saying, like yeah, giving you feedback not, and yeah, yeah, they're okay. like seasoned speakers, mm. like 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 people who have done this for years that yeah. give you feedback on how to actually like approach a talk and mm. um, redo your presentation. Yeah. But I think post TED, a lot of the presentations and approaches I did were like self taught. Mm-hmm. Uh, always practicing like in front of my mom, and then she'd tell me actually you 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 do um um a lot mm. like maybe think, you know, like should pick out certain things and give me feedback and say like try to minimize that. Yes. Pitching in front of the mirror, pitching in the in the bathroom when you're having a shower. Mm. I think that's really important. So practice, practice, practice. You have to have practice. Yeah. Practice yeah. is important. Watching like YouTube videos of like people who inspire you as speakers uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Like I, I could have a career as a public speaker if I wanted right now. <laughs> um, yeah. I think like that's really important. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And when somebody gives you feedback about your presentation, don't take it. Negatively. You're yeah. just like, okay, yeah. fine. Yeah. Uh, some people feel really um, touchy attack. about it. Yeah. I'm just like, it's yeah. feedback. So yeah. take yeah. it, leave it. Fe- <laughs> feedback is feedback. Yes. But some of them give you really good feedback. Be like, you could do it more numbers, facts, and things like that. Mm. Tell a story, you know. Mm. Uh, and each time you learn. So um, back to how we can actually encourage more women to uh, get out there and tell their story. Mm. It starts with a conversation. Mm. Um, I am known for throwing people in the deep end. <laughs> and I've done that several times, but I yeah. don't think so that approach works with everyone. They feel, yeah. they're actually traumatized by it. They're like, oh my God. They, they, I, I, they, they, they start sweating and they're like, how am I going to do this? And I'm just yeah. like, just go for it. Yeah. And sometimes just giving them that uh, um, the encouragement yeah. Yeah. and just working mm. with them is, is, is important. Mm. You know, and... Mm. Um, and if you know a person's personality and character and saying this is not a person you just drop in the deep end, you need to teach yeah. them how to <laughs> get into the pool, <laughs> then swim with floaters, yeah. then probably do a bit of few strokes. Yeah. I think that's needed for some. Mm. So um, encouragement to just say that they do have the knowledge. Yes. These are tips on how you can actually like be confident on, on stage mm, or on a, skills. Pa- yeah, on a panel and things like that. Mm. And not not saying in it 
in a condescending manner like you know you're the you, you're the subject matter expert mm. and this is how you know it but more in a very like friendly warm you mean yeah yeah now jessica uh, about this several times several times even i lost count that the greatest enemy of a woman is a woman <laughs> maybe you have also had it uh, uh i do agree with that partially yeah, yeah if you do how can we address this because we all want everyone to win it's not a matter of gender you know i met a lot of women and i asked them sometimes you don't hang out with a lot of women and they're like yeah sometimes when my best friends are uh, or the people i hang out are, are a man i'm mm. like okay that's interesting mm. and you ask why sometimes it could be upbringing mm. you know maybe there was a trauma from hanging out with ladies yeah mom mm. or something mm. or um maybe the women in the family really condescending on you mm. um but really yeah it it is true and i will talk about it very openly yes, yes. sometimes the the your worst enemy can be your <laughs> the person next to you who's mm. a woman mm. uh it's a good and bad thing Mm-hmm. How good is it? You have haters at the same time they're your <laughs> friends. <laughs> How can a hater become your friend? Oh yeah, they say keep your enemies closer. Okay. Right? Okay. So you know this is my enemy but you just keep them close enough to know. No, uh, maybe uh they know you're your the enemy but they're keeping you close. Oh okay, okay. Something I'm I see s- it can be switching. the other way around. Could be the other way around. Mm-hmm. Uh I am of this opinion. Mhm. Trust no one, mm. right? Mm-hmm. Because at the end of the day, you come into this world alone, mm-hmm. and you die alone. Mm. All right. Yes. Sorry to be so blunt. No, it's okay. Harsh. It's fine. Say the way it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes, you came from a family. Yes, you have a mom and dad. Mm-hmm. But you live life as an individual, and you mm. also live life with a family around you. But what you do is very individualistic. Mm. Just so, don't be selfish. Yes. Mm. So at the end of the day, the decisions that you do make, the choices that you do take, mm. is what molds you. Mm. You, know? mm. you can't blame your mom for your upbringing. Yeah. And saying you're this because of what happened, mm. or your dad because of this or mm. what happened. You mm. can't blame your friend because you're saying your friend gave you bad advice. You <laughs> listened. You listened to your friend, and you took that advice. You did not question. Yes. So we need to be like a little more curious mm-hmm. and question. Yes. As human beings, why, how, what? You know, ah. we'll just jump in and be like, "Oh, this is a, a, a yummy drink. And it's taste poison. It? Let's taste it, <laughs> and we all go with it, right? Yeah. So. Again, if you think uh, women are your worst enemy, mm. ask why. Mm. And then address that. If men that. are your worst enemy, ask why. Be yeah. paranoid. Yes. Trust no one. Yes. That's that's the way we can address it. Well, that's my way of addressing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you're entitled to your own opinion. Yeah. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um so as 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 we as we come uh to conclusion of this I know Jessica you always out there looking out on ventures that are can actually empower others and here you have brave you mentioned it a couple of times do you mind telling us what brave is and what are you up to Yeah absolutely uh brave started six years ago uh we pivoted a couple of times but I'll actually t- uh, tell you what we are ra- really working on mm. we are working on a uh, workforce planning for internal teams for mm. global companies mm. and uh we built a platform uh it's called this uh discord mm. um where disco mm. where you can actually disco uh, disco disco yeah disco the dancing disco Uh yeah disco. Okay. okay. Disco we named it disco. Oh nice. Uh, that's like my <laughs> the creative team at play. Yeah. Uh disco in the, the sense that you can ask any workforce planning questions mm. to the simulator and mm. say hey disco uh I need uh five data scientists for my project mm. in the next uh six months. Mm. What do I do? Disco gives you a simulation of what you have on your current team. Yes. The skill sets, the gaps. Mm the revenue you need and, and these all automated yes oh okay yes 
Interesting. I, I think I had a peek on that product in, in development. I won't tell you where, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what uh, Brave is building. Mm. Uh, I transitioned out of Brave uh, about um, almost a year ago mm. uh, to actually work on the continent. Mm. Since Brave is more global, mm. I still am a, a director mm. uh, and a co-founder. So I yeah. attend the quarterly board meetings yeah. and help them uh, in terms of connections for business development and, and fundraising. That's it yeah. uh, so far yeah. as to how uh, I work with Brave. Yes. Uh, other than that, right now, I'm just focused on... Um, creating music mm. uh, as a music entrepreneur mm. and uh, the Web3 technology yeah. and, and really understanding um, how artists can actually commercialize their art and music. Yeah. Uh, I'm sti- I still have a passion for talent, mm. tech talent and product. Mm. So that's something I still continue uh, working with companies on a consulting basis. Mm, nice, nice, nice. So I think uh, that's interesting. Maybe next time we are here, you'll, you'll talk a, a little bit or maybe perform a little bit of music. Sure. Um, and, yeah, you know, that journey, uh, it was in tran- uh, tran- uh, transitioning from, you know, tech to music. What's the relation think, and stuff to correct, like that? Yeah. To correct you, Michael, I'm not transitioned from tech to music. I mm. am in the intersection of tech and music. Mm, that's also interesting. Mm. And, and how does that look like? Um, so... Uh, thank you so much, uh, Jessica, and uh, it's been a pleasure always having you, having some serious conversations. And uh, this is Michael Kemadi, call me MK uh, from Impact Masters Media. Thank you for joining us. Have a fruitful day.